Today we've got a crazy revenge story about a four car pileup. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, sorry I'm fat. I have two stories today that have me feeling low yet victorious. I've birthed two large babies, my first in 2018, almost 8 pounds, and my second in 2020, almost 9 pounds. Add in COVID, my oldest who was adopted, and a foster kiddo for a while, needless to say I've had trouble losing weight and reducing my mom pooch. But I've been working on it pretty hard the past few months, and I'm now noticing that a lot of my clothes are getting looser. I decided to reward myself by getting some new clothes that fit better. At one store, I was simply looking at some clothes when I overheard a guy say, Man, why do people look at skimpy clothes when they clearly don't have the body for it? I subtly snuck a peek, and I see him giving angry looks at me. I'm the only other person in this section other than, I'm assuming, his wife. Now, not trying to body shame, but this guy had no room to be talking. He was over here looking like Winnie the Pooh with several inches of his massive stomach on display. I sweetly turned to him and said, I popped out two big babies. What's your stomach's excuse? His wife just about died laughing as this guy turned purple. Later at another store trying on some dresses. It's one of those stores where they have a mirror in the dressing room, but have the better multi-sided mirror and better light outside of the dressing room. I popped out to check myself in the better mirror when a woman came over excitedly and said, Ooh, congrats on the baby. I was obviously not thrilled because it is a bit of a sore spot with me that I do still look pregnant after all this time, but instead I just said, thanks, she was born in 2020. The woman's face fell and she scampered off. Moral of the stories, keep your mouth shut about other people's bodies. In the first incident, I can't imagine anybody being dumb enough to say that stuff out loud if they're gonna say that to begin with. In the second, this is just a proper example of what you never do to a stranger. I don't care if somebody actually looks like they're literally about to pop. I'm never going to just walk up to a stranger and say congrats on the baby, when's it due? I just can't take that risk, you know? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, petty witches don't just get mad, they get ahead. So, my mother decided she wanted to buy a new car. She did some research and saw that a dealership nearby had a car brand that she was interested in, so off we go. My mom's in her early 80s and would have hoped that this would be her last car. So we looked online and got a general idea of what the vehicle would cost. So we start walking around and finally, out comes Jerk. For some reason he comes up real abrasive. And when I questioned why the price on the car was nine to ten thousand dollars over what my research was, he got all defensive. My mom said she wanted to spend around twenty thousand. He says, well, you won't find that here. You should go get a cheaper vehicle like a Kia or a Hyundai. So we say, great. We'll go somewhere else. We ended up finding her a brand new car and the salesman was amazing. So I left a review on the other dealer's Google page telling a short version of this story and ended with, we bought a car elsewhere and gave a nice salesman the commitment. Let's be real, I'm willing to bet that if you went to this place and even if it wasn't marked up nine to $10,000 more than the online listing, by the time he got through purchasing this vehicle, they would find so many different ways to add on other ticky tacky fees that you probably would spend nine to 10,000 extra dollars by the time you're done. This next story is racist gets food. About 15 years ago, I worked for a restaurant that specialized in turkey and Thanksgiving meals. On Thanksgiving morning, we had hundreds of people picking up pre-made orders. I would help the customers bring their order into their car. It was me, a white male, and a Jamaican man helping to bring the orders. As I was helping somebody bring their order to their car, a customer asked that I help them, even though the Jamaican was available. So I got back inside the restaurant, helped grab this person's order, and carried it out to their car with them. As we walked to his car, he asked me if the Jamaicans that worked there touched his food. He told me he wouldn't accept the food if the Jamaicans helped made the food. I told him no, the Jamaicans that work there are waiters, waitresses, and cleanup crew, like dishwashers and janitors. He thanked me, tipped me $10, and was on his way. What I didn't tell him was that there were three Jamaicans that were involved in every step of the process of making his food. So yes, they had their hands all over his food. 
When I got back in, the hostess who's also Jamaican asked me what that was about because she heard him ask for me specifically. I explained it to her, gave her the Jamaican that was helping bring out the food the tip that I got, and the hostess relayed all this to the bosses, who then blocked this person from ever ordering from the restaurant again. See, now would it have been better if you did what OP did and let them leave thinking they got away with it? Or should they have been told that Jamaicans handled every step of the process? All the food, all the bagging, every single step besides me bringing this to your car. You know, challenge them to just dump the food after they've already paid. Our next story is, my ultra Trumpy neighbor has been harassing me. Quiet time here is 10 p.m. It was 8.33 p.m. I was vacuuming and for a straight hour I heard a loud banging on the ceiling and something heavy like a baseball bat or a rifle. I stopped the vacuuming like 20 minutes into her banging but she just kept going. And I have a pretty quiet vacuum. Come to think of it though, when I moved in, she played loud music. When I was watching the midterm elections, she went on her balcony and blasted some conservative radio show or podcast. She's yelled at other people to shut up in the middle of the day just for having conversations in the middle of the parking lot. I googled her address and she has all sorts of fascist, anti-LGBT transphobic, conspiracy theory crap on her Facebook page. Apartment office and police aren't doing anything. What should I do? I've been thinking about putting her on blast on Facebook or putting a bunch of leftist bumper stickers on my car to piss her off because I can park that crap right next to where she has to look at it when she has her curtains open. Well, I think OP can do whatever they want, they can put whatever stickers on, but I will advise somebody like this sounds very prone to trying to get away with damaging your property if you have those kinds of stickers on there. So results may vary. I did see a suggestion that was pretty great though, they said donate X amount of dollars to some cause that would clearly not align with her views and donate it in her name using her address so she gets a thank you for it. Our next story is, I got revenge on my ex-husband. This is a throwaway account, but my ex-husband was very crappy towards the end of our relationship. Constant cheating, lying and playing victim, when he could have just got the divorce two years earlier like I asked, but manipulated me into staying for the sake of his own financial gain. I also loved that man so much. I finally got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. I took the few clothes I had and left within 24 hours like he wanted, though he had won with the mind games. He forced me out because I saw the messages in his discord and I'd seen him talking to some girl in his discord about me and how I was his female roommate and that was kind of the last straw. So before I left our living situation, I got a small turkey injector and put milk in it and put it into a bunch of different areas in his mattress. I don't feel bad at all, he's still sleeping on the bed till this day. The idea of him sleeping in that cheese bed and that he's possibly brought a woman to hook up with on that mattress makes me laugh. Okay, bye. Gosh, I can only imagine he brings somebody home. Imagine they lay down in the bed or they just probably walk in the bedroom and you just kind of take a whiff of it, you know? It's like, why is his bedroom funky smelling? If that isn't the fastest red flag to get out of there, Would you be desperate enough to overlook a funky smelling bedroom? Or God forbid if you can identify it is the bed itself? Our next story is camping in a hotel foyer. I'm from South America and it's an 11 hour trip plus traffic on both countries. We arrived in New York City and asked for our keys at the hotel. I noticed there were some customers complaining loudly but I was too tired to care for other people's problems. Got out on my floor and felt the smell of fresh paint entered my room and the smell was overwhelming with windows that did not open. No human being could spend a night in there. So I went back to reception to request another room. A rude manager said they didn't have it. I should look for another hotel. But it was their problem to find me a room as I had a valid reservation. Back to reception, manager wouldn't look at me. A group of huge Germans were making a ruckus and small me, 30 year old female, then, had no chance to be heard. So I forgot the education my parents gave me. I went to the armchairs in the middle of the hall and took off my tennis shoes, oh relief, and put my socks to dry on the nearby sofa. Opened wide my two huge suitcases and removed my boots, shoes, and a heel and lined them up across the elevator hall, maximizing the inconvenience to all. 
took off my jackets and hanged them on four armchairs, let the suitcases open to air them out, then I laid barefoot on the sofa with not a worry in the world. Manager came running to me with new keys to another floor. Oh really? Just when I was getting comfortable? So yeah, put it all back in the luggage and the bellboy took me to a perfect apartment. The Germans were there still fighting for their rights. Don't mess with a South American who traveled 16 hours door to door on economy. 16 hours of traveling? Imagine the stink of those shoes coming off. Things probably have fermented inside those shoes by then. It's like opening a new brewed batch. If they wanted to keep the doors open, they have to find OP a new place. This next story is, throw me under the bus? Nah, I don't think so. I work for a medical equipment company, specifically in the contracting department. We handle paperwork for million dollar instruments globally, and I handle half of the United States in my territory. It can be challenging, and if a customer fails to sign an agreement, it can cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars a day if something breaks. And if they fail to sign because of me, then that can come back to bite my company in the butt because we might have to pay for the repair ourselves. This hasn't ever happened yet, just a potential consequence. I'll knock on wood now. So I'm fastidious about my work. Half an hour ago, I got an email from one of my account managers, we'll call him Hank. Subject line wasn't directly hostile, but it was marked important and listed a bigger account. Hank emailed me wanting to know why a contract hadn't gotten to the customer, basically asking, Hey, this is way past due, and it's your fault. Care to explain yourself? He cc'd his boss and my supervisor so they could all see my big mistake. I dug and looked and he was right. The customer's contract expired 8 months ago. A little more digging and I found out he emailed me about this customer's equipment last September. So I reread the email chain. It was a conversation from half a year ago after all. Luckily for me, I keep all my emails filed perfectly account by account and even color coded in each folder based on info and subject. It's tedious, but it can definitely come in handy if I ever need to look back for any reason. Then I sent him a response. I said, hey Hank, there are two equipment pieces you asked about back on 910, right? The ones that were outside my scope? In the last email I'd seen from you about that, attached, you'd said you were putting together a contract for that equipment because my team doesn't handle these types of contracts, which I confirmed for you in the attached email from 1022. If I've let something slip through the cracks here, don't hesitate to ask. Always happy to help. I then attached the email where I'd told him that I wouldn't be handling this because it wasn't my job, and also attached the email where he acknowledged I was correct and said he would handle this himself. I kept both of our supervisors CC'd. After all, he'd been the one who added them. I basically told him, yeah, you did ask me about that and we determined it was in no way my job and definitely something you should handle. And you said you would handle that six months ago. Did you not handle it like you said you would? In front of our bosses. And now Hank's boss can start his day by reading about how Hank promised a customer a contract half a year ago and then never followed through. I suspect Hank will be meeting with his boss in a few hours to discuss this. It's gonna be a tough tough day for Hank. Anyone tries to throw me under the bus, I'm ready with a judo flip. I ain't going out like that. 100% always cover your butt. If you communicate by email for your business, you definitely want to archive and save any email. You never know. It doesn't hardly take up any storage space and it's pretty easy to organize almost every mailbox out there. Definitely just tuck it away for a rainy day. This next story is using Tinder while in a relationship. Good idea, you think? This happened a few years ago. I found a guy on Tinder that for the sake of the story I'll call Brandon. I knew that Brandon had a girlfriend of over a year because I followed his girlfriend on social media and we had mutual friends. But his Tinder profile said he was single and looking for hookups. Let's call his girlfriend Lisa. Lisa was drop dead stunning. Like I'd been jealous of her beauty since I first saw her picture. And I couldn't believe that this scumbag of a dude had been able to pull her and now was doing her like this. Heck no, I thought. I took a screenshot of his Tinder profiles and texted it to one of my friends who was also friends with Lisa. When Lisa found out, she was of course heartbroken, but she wasn't surprised since she had suspected Brandon of cheating for a long time since he'd been hiding his phone from her and acting strange in general. We all decided to play a little revenge game on Brandon. I matched him on Tinder and we started talking and soon decided to go out on a date to a local McDonald's. 
And while me and him were sitting there, Lisa and our friend was going to walk in and we'd all confront him. So the day came. I met Brandon at McDonald's. He told Lisa that he would go and watch a football game with one of his friends. Lisa played along answering something like, Okay, have fun, baby. Me and Brandon got our food and start small talking. He's really flirty and wants to be close to me. Lisa encouraged me before to let him be as close as he wanted to see how long he actually would take this. When Lisa and our friend finally walk into the restaurant, Brandon has his arm around me and is on the edge of kissing me. Lisa pokes on Brandon's shoulder and when he sees her, he runs to the bathrooms. The look on his face was priceless and dude wasn't mad enough to stay there and give a proper apology to his girlfriend's face. He instead texted her a whole freaking bible over snapchat begging for her forgiveness but she just replied a k and blocked him and i texted him saying i was in on everything and he blocked me there me and lisa remain friends till this day and we sometimes talk about this story and we can't stop laughing every time honestly this is one of those dream scenarios when you deal with a cheater you just think about how perfect it would be for you and the person you was cheating on to show up together and just have this great busted moment. At least they showed some level of shame. Some people would be in this situation and, I don't know, have some complex and act all like, I never care to begin with. Our next story is, my boss stopped paying people, so I stopped his income. I used to manage an amazing pub slash restaurant back in my old city. It's a 16th century coaching inn that had recently had a multi-million pound refurb. I more or less got on with the owner, but I knew he could be a bit of a jerk, so I kept my eye on him. I hired all the staff and worked closely with them. They were all 18 to 25 and I was early to mid 30s at this point, so I saw them as kids that were my responsibility. I genuinely liked nearly every member of staff I ever hired and wanted the best for them. Here's where we get into it. Every week, I would input the hours my staff worked and send it over to the gaffer to pay. One day, about five years into my tenure, he told me he was taking over that job. Obviously, alarm bells rang as he's a known penny pincher. As anyone who's worked this job knows, it's common for staff to stay later than Rhoda quite often if the place is really busy or someone calls in sick. My staff were happy to help me out as they know I'd help them out if needed and often they need the extra cash. My boss decided that if people worked late or came in early, then they wouldn't be paid for it. Staff that accounted for that money were left short that week. I had 18-year-old girls crying on my shoulder saying they can't eat. I was furious. I ranted at my boss and he gave excuses and said he'd look into it and refused to reimburse staff for what they'd worked. Luckily at this point, I'd lined up a new job because screw this guy. I went to work on the next shift and my replacement in the evening, just as it was getting busy, was late. Now I'm no sucker. I don't work for free and neither do my staff. I went around the pub and told every customer that we were closing and I told them why. I took food off people and returned their cash and threw it in the bin. I sent all the staff home and text my boss telling him, Hey, the assistant manager was late taking me off. As I knew I wouldn't be paid for this extra work, I've closed your pub. Man, he was going crazy. Phone rang off the hook and got ignored. I was put on gardening leave, meaning I was getting paid for no work for a bit. I went into a disciplinary meeting hoping to be fired so I could appeal and get more gardening leave. But they knew that I'd had too much on them, so they tried to just give me a ticking off. At which point, I told them about themselves in no uncertain terms and then quit. In the following week, the entire staff except the butt man quit too. The pub is now on its butt now and he's trying to sell, but no one wants it as it's underperforming and will cost a fortune. Just imagine being in the owner's situation here. You did a multi-million British pound refurbishment of this 16th century coaching inn, but you can't operate it for crap. And so you're so far in over your head, nobody's going to bail you out and your business is dwindling. What a nightmare owner. This next story is, I renamed a pothole. So I was on my way home from driving my kids to school and there was a jerk tailgating me for about 8 miles. He was going to one of the locals mountains to ski, which also happens to be where I live. PSA, there's a lot of people who move to the mountains to slow life down and hate dealing with the urban mindset. Slow the freak down and enjoy the beauty around you, not the view of my bumper. I was driving the big truck, the one we use when the snow's super deep or camping way out of the way in the summer. 
crappy mileage, but it will go almost anywhere. So on the way home, there's a pothole. It's big, about two feet by two feet and almost a foot deep. How do I know this? I've driven the truck through it and man, it was a jolt. Kids and I named it Axle Breaker. It's also not close to the side of the road and you have to almost go into oncoming traffic to avoid it. Normally there's an orange cone in front of it but someone else has hit it and it's in the snow on the side of the road. So dude's about 10 feet off my bumper and I hit this thing at full speed and he had zero time to react. Pothole is now called Tire Shredder. According to my neighbor, guy hit it and it completely shredded the sidewall. I cannot tell you how much I hate tailgaters, so the story is just beautiful. There's literally nothing good that comes from tailgating. I mean, I guess this guy imagines it's going to make you speed up, but the best drivers and something I do is I don't let tailgaters pressure me even if this guy's like honking relentlessly. When you're driving multi-ton potential death traps, you definitely need to try to stay composed regardless of circumstances. Our next story is, piss me off all weekend? Expect payback. Hi everyone, this tale set in 1986 and completely true. I'm rather proud of my 16 year old self. I, 16 year old female, and my brother, 18 year old male, were alone this particular weekend. Our parents visiting friends interstate for a wedding anniversary party. My brother Nick had been a complete butt to me all weekend. He was thoroughly enjoying my growing bad mood. Usually I gave back better than I took, but my mind was elsewhere and sluggish. By Sunday night, I was so pissed off with his BS, I wanted to slap him upside the head. Repeatedly. I was in the kitchen doing dinner prep when Nick entered the kitchen, grabbed an apple and had an opinion on my cooking ability. He wandered off laughing. I was shaking with anger when I had a light bulb moment. I yanked open the pantry and grabbed a large can of dog food. I opened the can and dumped it into the pot. I tossed in the vegetables and sang as I warmed up Nick's dinner. I'm a vegetarian so me not eating the stew was nothing new. I called out that dinner was ready. Nick, being the gross pig he was, made a few choice remarks before digging in. To say he sucked down his food like a hoover was an understatement. He piled the rest of the pot onto his plate and dived in again. I had to leave before I lost it and ruined my revenge. I've never told him what he ate that night. So Nick, I know you'll see this, a massive screw you for treating me like crap. I've told your wife about it at her bridal shower. Good luck, butt hat. I would say this is probably relatively harmless. I assume most dog food is at least like human grade to the lowest degree. I think the real concerning thing is this guy lapped it up like it was nothing and didn't even notice that it was weird. Our next story is four car pileup and you thought you were innocent? The other day I visited the car wash for a quick morning rinse off. Everything was going fine until I was mid suds. All of a sudden, I see brake lights and I hit the car in front of me. At first, I didn't know what was going on because I'd just gone through the bristle brushes and I could hardly see through the soap. Not even five seconds later, I get hit from the back. The rollers in the car wash are still trying to lurch my car forward, so it just became a back and forth game. After some beeping, the attendant came over and began asking what happened, but we were all confused. After we get out of the car wash, we spoke to the manager, assuming it was some sort of malfunction. It turns out that the woman in a BMW in front of me decided she didn't need to put her car in neutral. So instead, she drove herself through the automatic car wash. And when I say drove, I mean drove. The manager checked the cameras in the car wash and her car wasn't even lined up with the rollers on the belt that pushes the car through. She was about 20 inches ahead of the rollers. In the middle of the car wash, the sprayer function started spraying and her car wasn't even at that point yet. So by the time she got there, she only got half of the soap sprayed off of her car. She then stops, apparently waiting around for the rest of the water, and that's when I collide into her vehicle. After the collision, she slowly drives out of the car wash. She was the only car that made it out of the car wash in the beginning because the rest of us were in neutral and the belt was paused. We originally thought that she drove off because we couldn't find her vehicle. After checking the cameras, the manager found her vacuuming her car. According to her, she was completely surprised because she stated that she was not involved in an accident in the car wash and nothing had gone wrong. She becomes belligerent and yelling ensues. She denied her involvement so fiercely stating that she didn't have scratches on her car so she must not have been involved. 
She still stated this after management showed her the video evidence. She had the gall to admit, of course I drove my car through the car wash with my foot on the brake. I didn't want to hit anyone. After we all scratched our heads, the management began to explain to her why those big red signs are there and what they say since apparently she couldn't read. We were waiting on the traffic police, but a very annoyed police officer arrives at the scene. You could tell from the moment Officer Evans pulled up that she did not want to be there. Evans took all of our statements, including the managers, and took pictures of all our vehicles to make her police report. There was about 10 minutes of Evans talking with the woman and trying to explain to her that you don't drive through a car wash with your foot on the brake or you become responsible for anything that happens. She wasn't even listening to the cop. She still tried to argue that she was innocent and not involved. During the exchange, the woman refused to give us her information, let alone her full name. She told us that if we wanted to get her information, we would just have to wait until the police report. I ended up going up to Officer Evans and asking her for the woman's information because it's illegal to withhold information during an accident. The woman then went to take pictures of all of our cars, and the third car involved had a huge dent on the underside of the bumper. When the owner of the car pointed it out to the woman, she said that she didn't know if that was there before. And when the owner of the car said that it was not and that it happened in the car wash, she said, let's not be dramatic. Her entire demeanor made my skin crawl. I've never wanted to punch a witch so much in my life. Besides her attitude, she was acting aloof in the situation, smiling and overall avoiding conversation with the rest of us. Fast forward to today, when we get the police report, and this witch of a cop didn't put in any of our statements down or information. She did a basic layout of the collision, and that was all. So, that was absolutely no help in the claim process. I get a call from the woman's insurance company, State Farm, and to no surprise, she's claiming that it was our fault and that she was not involved in the accident. The State Farm rep actually told me that the story that she was telling didn't make sense, nor did it match with the damages. So he asked me to clarify again for the second time what happened because they were just trying to figure out how to proceed with this. I explained what happened and he mentioned that it was all making sense now. I brought up the video footage and he said that she hadn't mentioned that but if I could get it sent over to them, then it would clear everything up. The car wash wouldn't send the videos directly to us but said that if the insurance company reached out to him, he would send it to them. For some reason, I just had an inkling that they may not want to send it for their own purposes and liability issues. I would have definitely have gone after them if they had withheld, but it turns out I didn't need them. I decided this morning at 3 a.m. to go out to my car and check my dash cam footage. The day of the accident, I completely forgot that I had a dash cam. It's relatively new and I don't get into a lot of accidents. Lo and behold, I have a copy of the incident before and after with a clear view of her license plate and her brake lights shining on camera. To say I was elated is an understatement. I'd gone down a little rabbit hole the night before and found her LinkedIn with all of her job information and her personal phone number just in case. I wish I could see the look on her face or hear her voice when her insurance company calls her to tell her that she's at fault. I would actually pay money to hear her response. It really shocked me the length that people will go to to lie and get out of something even when they have hard evidence against them. A part of me wonders if she just thought that her insurance company would side with her or if she thought that we weren't going to send the video. I also just want to ask her why the freak she's so freaking stupid. Has she never gone through a car wash before? I need answers. So I guess this isn't exactly petty revenge since she knew about the video since the beginning, but I think that she was convinced that she was going to get away with this. Especially when she saw the police report, I'm sure that she thought she was golden. Lying to your insurance company and fighting with the cops doesn't exactly lead you on the right path to justice. It's petty revenge for me because now I don't have to wait for the car wash place to actually send it over, or if they were just BSing with that. And it came from me, and there's a part of me that wishes I could just text it to her and say, don't screw with people with dash cams. Well, I would definitely wait for all of this to be well resolved before going and trying to get in contact and say don't mess with people with dash cams. But honestly, I would say they kind of deserve it. Also, I kind of understand why the car wash wouldn't want to share that video for liability reasons. 
because in no way should she have been able to have the car in that situation in the car wash. I've gone to a number of car washes before and if you're new or green to the situation, they kind of make sure that you put the car in neutral, let it grab the car, they reinforce foot off the brake, like there might be a little bit of a liability there. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.